Okay, in this segment we're going to continue talking about quad quadric surfaces, um, but in particular we're going to focus in on the idea that a quadric surface does not necessarily have to be centered at the origin and how we can deal with that. So for example, um, we're going to look at the graph number 34 in your exercises at the end of section 12.7, which is 4x squared minus y squared plus 16z minus 2 squared equals 100. Now, dividing through by 100, we get x squared over 25, or 5 squared, minus z squared over 100, or 10 squared, plus z minus 2 squared and then we would have 16 over 100, which if we take the reciprocal and flip it would be 100 over 16, or that reduces to 25 over 4, or 5 halves squared equals 1. Now, um, in order to analyze the graph of this function, what I would probably recommend is to actually look at um, or sorry, not function, but quadric surface, is to look at not this quadric surface, but um, one that is going to be centered at the origin, but shaped the same. And what I mean is, if you look at z minus 2 here, the effect that that's going to have is to shift this quadric surface up two units along the z axis. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to graph x squared over 5 squared minus y squared over 10 squared plus z squared over 5 halves squared equals 1 and then shift up 2 units. In other words, add 2 to every z coordinate. Okay, now the analysis of this graph is going to be very much the same, except in the last example we looked at an ellipsoid. This is not going to turn out to be an ellipsoid, and I know this because of the negative here. And so when we break this down into planes, um, say for example letting z equal 0, or in other words the xy plane, we're going to get the graph x squared over 5 squared minus y squared over 10 squared, which we know is an uh, hyperbola. Okay, and so we're going to need to remember how to graph the hyperbola. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. When y is equal to 0, and we're looking at the x, z plane, we're going to have the um, shape x squared over 5 squared plus z squared over 5 halves squared equals 1. Now this being positive in the center, this is going to be an ellipse with a major axis along the x-axis. And then finally, when we let x equal 0, we're going to have z squared over 5 halves squared minus y squared over 10 squared equals 1. Let me just divide this up so you can see a little bit more clearly. Now that's going to be a hyperbola as well. So let's talk about graphing these three traces. All right, so I'm going to draw my, um, my three space axes here. So here's z, here's x, or sorry, y. And here's x. Now, I know that along my x-axis I'm going to have to go out from um, at least to 5 and negative 5 uh, for the vertices of my hyperbola, and then they're going to extend beyond that. Um, for the y-axis, we're going to be um, 
needing to go out to 10 at least. On the z-axis we're going to need to go to 2.5 and, and of course we're going to be shifting up two units as well so we want to leave room for that. So I'm going to try to do um, maybe 15 on as uh, on each side of my axis. So 5, 10, 15, um, 5, 10, 15, 5, 10, 15. And again, uh, just to try to try to make it a little easier to look at, let's go ahead and make our negative side of our axes a different color. So going down and back and to the left. Okay, and we have 5 and 10 and 15, 5 and 10 and 15, and 5 and 10 and 15. Okay, let's start with the xy plane. We have a hyperbola um, along the x-axis we're going to have our transverse axis which means the axis that has the vertices of the hyperbola and we're going to go out to um, the um, the vertices are going to be five units on either side of the origin again I am graphing this graph first and then I'll show you what happens when we shift up two units. Alright, so um, let's do blue. So on the x-axis we're going to go out to 5 and negative 5 and on the y-axis we're going to go out to 10 and negative 10. Now remember to graph a hyperbola, we want to graph the asymptotes of the hyperbola. And so we draw this box. We box in the uh, uh, the ends of the um, transverse axis and the, um, I always forget the name of this one. What is that other axis called? Conjugate axis, that's right. Alright, so so starting over, um, um, we know that the transverse um, axis is going to go along the x-axis and it's going to go from 5 to negative 5 and the conjugate axis is going to go from negative 10 to 10 and drawing in the rectangle or it really looks more like a parallelogram, but it would be a rectangle if we were looking at it directly from the top. Um, this is where the asymptotes for our parabola are going to be. And we know the parabola is going to go along the x-axis because that's the positive term here. So we're going to draw in our parabola with vertices at 5, 0, 0 and negative 5, 0, 0 and with um, branches that stretch out along these asymptotes. Okay, so that's the first graph and then for y equals 0 we have an ellipse with a um, a major axis of length 10 uh, we actually already saw that here along the x-axis we have the major axis of length 10 and then the along the z-axis we have a minor axis of length 2.5. So going 2.5 up and 2.5 down on the z-axis and drawing in our ellipse above and below there we get that shape. And then letting x equal 0 here we have another hyperbola which is formed in the yz plane and um, for this hyperbola the z-axis represents the um, um, transverse axis and um, 
Let's draw in the square for the z-axis. I hope I can find a color that will work for us here. Let's use green. Okay, so for the transverse axis, um, it's going to go again from 10 to negative 10, or rather this would be the conjugate axis, it's going to go from 10 to negative 10, the transverse axis from 2.5 to negative 2.5. And so drawing in this rectangle that guides our asymptotes. And if you're having trouble following this, more than likely you just need to go and review your, um, well, either you're having a hard time visualizing it, which can't blame you there. It's hard to see. Um, oops some trouble with my pen here. And then this asymptote go sort of something like that. And then we're going to draw um, the top of our hyperbola here, top and bottom. Okay, and so this hyperbola stretches this way and this way and this way and this way. Okay, and so what's happening here is we have these, um, I know this one's kind of extra difficult to see, but we have, let me go ahead and blue, um, if we connect these hyperbolas with ellipses as they come out, we get wider and wider ellipses. Whoops. And they're following a hyperbolic pattern um, upwards and side to side. Okay, so now I'm going to cut to um, a computer-generated version of this graph to help you visualize it a little bit better. Um, but in the computer-generated version, they're actually graphing the final graph, which has been shifted upward two units. Okay, so here's a better um, visualization of the uh, hyperboloid of one sheet that we just drew, number 34. And um, in the instructions for the problem, they asked us to identify the surface and make a rough sketch that shows its position and orientation. So they're looking for its position, meaning its center, which is at 0, 0, 2. And then you can see in the rough sketch they've included just the ellipses at the ends and the center, connected by hyperbolas on the sides.